Thank you everyone for um, joining our talk with Yana Oprasho. Um, she was our exhibiting artist for Escape Projects. Um, before we start, Tigur, I could you know, give an introduction um, to especially to Ara, who's our new intern, by the way, um, from the core team of um, VIP um, Lab. Um, so, uh, 98 is an artist-run space in Escolta, Manila. So we're a community network library kitchen shop. But depending on the need, we could be anything. <laughs> we um, mount um, not only um, artistic um, events like um, artist talks, um, performances, or exhibits, but we do it in different ways as well, like um, a bazaar, a publication, or just a simple gathering. Um, basically, the aim is to, you know, um, provide a platform for creatives to, um, to um, engage with um, the local community and the general public. So essentially, the keywords that motivate 98 programs are collaboration, experimentation, accessibility, and community, which I think are, for our discussions today, are going to be in, in line with Yana's practice, no? Um, so, as I've mentioned, Yana um, was our participating artist for Escape Projects. Um, so, Escape um, Projects is our exhibition program and it deals with special negotiations, transformations, and interventions. Um, it um, revolves around particular locations, context, um, renditions, whether as flights of imagination or discharges of the creative spirit. Um, yeah, uh, so Yana, um, welcome to the talk. Hey, salamat. Ano, giving time. No? Thank you for having me. I'm super honored to have had my first ever solo exhibition with you guys. Yes. Um, just to give to give um you guys um a background of Yana's ano no practice. Um, so Yana is a painter, muralist, and creative collaborator based in Manila, Philippines. Um, inspired by movement and color, her practice revolves around bringing out confidence in self and community. Her ways of expression include painting murals that have abstracted themes, emphasizing um, the importance of the process of creation than the outcome. She has also been working with various creative groups for the past decades, um, helping to foster community in uh, the local art scene by conducting art workshops and organizing art programs. So, um, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, Yana, would you want to start with your presentation, Yuna, or like talk about yeah. your work with um, escape projects and even with uh, your experience with the Hub's creative space? Um, Brett, ah? Creative Space Grant, yeah. Okay, so um, let me start first with the with the exhibit itself. So it actually um, was born out of a need to just have an exhibit. You know, it was um, it was in the moment, and I pitched um, the proposal or the idea to Kathy and to Ninety Eight B, since it was really one of the um, it was really one of the galleries and exhibition spaces that were really close to my heart ever since before by even before I met Kathy and the group a bunch of my friends were already collaborating with this really small gallery <laughs> with parang guerrilla style of um you know um putting up exhibitions and I really liked that it was community led and community it really branched out so I wanted my exhibit to have that feeling of it's it's not exclusively available to just people who are invited, but it, actually everybody's invited. So that dun palang I was already um, attracted to the to the concept of exhibiting with nine eight B. So thank you for having me. The the process of Mounting the exhibit was also very new to me because it was the first solo show. I've only ever been with group shows before. And so I went through so many phases. It started with 
panic <laughs> because I pitched the idea of a solo show. But I like that it was spontaneous because it spontaneity is really part of my practice. At the time, I was already um, a grantee of the Creative Space Grant. So it was really, it really worked well that whatever I was working on for the exhibit, I was also working within the creative space in, in Hub Make Lab in Escolta. So people would, you know, I was making my paintings and I was doing my whole process, I was moving around and people would come by, walk behind me or like, look, what's that? <laughs> so, so many things to consider into the work that went into the to the exhibit itself. Um, it's, ano no, a context to everybody. Oh yeah. So yung SK projects kasi, well, well for 98B in general, for the projects that we mount, so we don't own a space. <laughs> We're an independent um, um, space and initiative. Um, we're not funded. We don't own a space. We're not pro for profit. So the spaces that we use um, to mount, um, for instance, exhibitions um, or performances, etc., workshops, um, we borrow them from various stakeholders from the community. So for for um, the case of Yana, the space that we used was the space of the Hubmake Lab, the common area, and some the some of the booths there. So um, if you compare, you know, like the spaces that we use for our projects, hindi siya yung usual white cube type of spaces. So um, before, like we even, when we had, we still had um, pan project space, um, parang storefront nga yung pinag, um, may exhibitan ng mga artists and even like abandoned um, abandoned buildings, unused buildings. We even had, um, a screening in a parking lot. So um, for escape, eh, um, we always, I guess, um, for the artists, um, we try to, you know, like um, invite them to um, play with the space, yung potentials niya. Kasi nga, since hindi siya yung usual na white kid na parang hang and then finish na, um, or like put it on the pedestal or whatever, like we try to encourage artists to, you know, like play around with the exhibition space. So I um I can yes, yeah. please. Um I I was going to um share also some photos, but if yeah, okay, so um just to give you a little walkthrough. I would love to give you a digital walkthrough for the people who weren't able to go to the space itself during the exhibit. Um, Yana, if you have photos, I could take, take this down. Um, yeah, no, that's okay. It's actually okay now. Um, so yeah, this is the, this is it at the center, center area. And it, it, this was very intentional for me to put there because this is the, the whole exhibit is made up of four, a series of four. And so the, these ones on display at the center are the last of the series. They're the fourth and the last. I, I'm so, so sorry, they're the third to the last. <laughs> they're the third to the last. It's a whole process because so you have to actually really physically go through all the stages of the artwork. So this one was really intended for people to walk through it for people to see how it's just really bare and really simple and it's just it's just as it is walang walang frame there's no glass it's not beautified at all it's just you go and you can see behind the paper and, and the materials i used so i wanted the people to really interact with these pieces that's why it was placed at the center yeah but so yeah let me see kathy i'll just go through the whole let me share using my here. I'll stop here. But some of the works na, that you exhibited, you made them in the hub, right? Yeah, most of them actually. Most of them, a bunch of them. Um, um, I really hoped that I could I could um document it 
Mm-hmm. So, to, for the whole for the whole thing to just kind of flow from start to finish and then actually because the creative space grant culmination was also the day that i ended the exhibit so mm-hmm. it all just really went well together so mm-hmm. let me share some of the images that we have so as i mentioned earlier my exhibit is titled currents so currents having a um, different meaning depending on how you use it i mainly use the definition of the water and the way it crashes and recedes and crashes and recedes. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you why. So this is the... And here you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. So this is the first of the series. This is called Placid Acid Series. When I was making this, I was in the hub and people would really see me putting the elements in. I was doing my whole thing, brush strokes and all, color mixing. And I was, I don't know, when I was doing this, I was feeling very hyper aware <laughs> that I was being watched. So there's an element of editing, self-editing, you know, and um, kind of, curating what I was putting on the canvas just because I knew there were people who were watching me and I kind of felt either self-conscious or just performative you know I wanted to make it pretty I wanted to make it nice and I was really um, subtracting the elements as I was going along I wanted to put more color but I took it back and I wanted to do more but I took it back because I I felt like there's a certain point in my practice that I just have to make beautiful things. If I was going to show you more of my previous work, I really started off with painting like very flowery or floral elements. And I felt like people related to that more than my other works now that it's more abstract. So yeah, the first of the series, I tried to impress people, essentially. I wanted to make it like a saleable thing. Because, you know, I go through that all the time. I try to make stuff that I hope people would like. But then the next part of the series is a series of paintings that show a little bit of frustration. not frustration in my work, just frustration in general that I have to kind of apologize for making a mess, you know? I like, because as, as, an, as an object artist, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to show that there is um, order in the way that I create a mess. But in this case, I, I wish I, I I'll show you a I'll show you a close up later. But in this case, I was already doing I already I also did this at the hub. I was using all of the colors and the movements and the strokes and everything. And when I was almost finished, I looked at it like the whole series and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so heavy, it's so dark. What if nobody likes it? And then I proceeded to cover it up with some white and I kind of so the title of this series is Outbursts and Remunerations. So I feel like at the start, I was feeling confident. I was doing like, I'm doing my thing. I'm going crazy with this. And then I took a moment to kind of, parang, oh no, but I have to make it look pretty. <laughs> I have to be more quiet about it or something. Something about how I see myself, I guess. Uh, I... I just, there's a, a lot of times when I do my work that I don't feel like I am good enough. So I have to edit it at the end for it to be presentable. So the first of the, so the first two series, if you noticed, are really presented in a gallery ready presentation. They're in glass, they're framed, and then they're hung 
the titles and everything because it's how I think people want to receive or look at or see artworks neat and clean so all of that would eventually kind of bring me down to a point na I start thinking okay this is my first solo exhibit and why am I why am I editing what I'm putting out about right? it's it's supposed to be it's supposed to be authentic to that process so I was like okay let's do it let's let's take pieces of paper and let's just express so we usher in the third of the series which is the one that I am you saw kanina the ones in the middle they are let me show you these ones yeah <laughs> so all together i don't know it just makes me happier to see them it's like i was making them i was like listening to music you know the things that you do when you make and you create you just you're in it and you know because because as a person and as a creative i like to have a lot of control so when i paint I feel like I'm my best when I get to a point that I don't have the control. It's something else inside of me that takes over and kind of steers the wheel. About, okay, I feel like I'm feeling free, but the one that's really taking over is the real, real me. You know, you know how you have a version of yourself that you think you are, and then there's a version of you that people think that you are. So nobody really knows who you are, except that that subconscious person. And I try to tap into that person inside me whenever I paint my best. I feel like I feel like even if it doesn't look like it's the best or it's the most curated or it's the most beautiful or prettified or yassified you know but it's what i it's what i like it's what i i wanted the people to interact with it to touch it to, to poke it you know because it's just paper it's just big paper mounted on wood that we just assembled also so the the rawness of it is very intentional yeah, so this is the third of the series. And then after getting all of the feelings out and all of the thoughts about insecurity and anxiety and all of that, I wanted to show that it's not a bad part of the process. It's actually something you acknowledge to get over, to get to the next part, which ushers in the fourth of the series. And the fourth is actually made um, using all the paint that was available. But when I was working, um, I had a lot of paint on my palette left. So I used up all of the excess paint and I just put it on however many pieces of paper that I could get my hands on and this is what came out and while I was making this I was feeling very like grateful and grateful that I you know that I made it through the whole <laughs> up and down of the thing so this is what the last the last ones that I made this was uh, like a few days before the opening and I was really excited I was just sitting down and I was like ah I was thinking about all of the people that kind of contributed to making kind of helping me make it this far or kind of helping make it to this point where I I feel calm and confident. Now I can put out work that I feel is so abstract, but people still appreciate it. So the title of this series is People I've People I've Met. So yeah, um, and then when I kind of 
get to a point where I'm comfortable again. I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I have enough motivation in me to start the cycle all over again. Basically, to make work for clients and for commissions and for other people. And it just goes circling back. It's a beautiful and painful cycle that I go through. And I feel like a lot of us go through as creatives because it it just takes so much out of you <laughs> to make it to the next stage, you know. And you, sometimes it, it's heavier than it was before. So currents is my... It's the way I see myself fighting back against something natural. Like, I know it's going to come. You know, I know the, the, <laughs> the feelings are going to come or the challenges are going to come, but I'm fighting against it. I'm like, no. And then, oh my gosh, it comes. <laughs> and then, no. And then, and then like, I'm like, I feel crazy. I feel, I feel very alone in the process. But that's why, I was, that's why it was super nice to do it in the hub because you're never alone in the hub and you know people who didn't even intend to go to my show saw it and they were the people who I've never met before but they really resonated with some of the pieces and they told me how it made them feel and I was like this is the best feeling in the world you know I didn't have to um I didn't have to work so hard to bring my work to the people who I really wanted to see, to see them. Yeah, so. yeah, and I mentioned yeah. earlier, uh, um, the first series of your work, you did it in the hub. No? Yes, I did. Oh. Yes, uh -uh. So, yeah, ganyan. But the latter part, did you, see, did you make it somewhere else or still in the hub? No, I made it in my home. I made it in my home. It was... It was kind of this thing. Ah, I want. I, I failed to mention that the last two of the series. You mentioned. I, if you notice, they're just on paper. They're very raw. Cause I feel like my work is not meant to be hung on walls. Although it would be nice, but I, I really invest in works that. You, you, it can disappear eventually. It can just it just weather away. <laughs> it's fine. It's it's the it's the, it relates to it. Okay na okay na ko after that. You know, even if it's just as simple as a piece of paper and and and, and um yeah yeah I think it it it's. I'm super grateful because it just embodied everything that I wanted to say. And and when, when people were going to go to the space, I could tour them around and it, it would feel like you really went around because it, right? it was the coffee shop and then you had to cross and then you had to... Uh, and uh, yeah, so thank you. <laughs> you and parang, I, I just mentioned it because like, I remember the rain the building owner telling us you know her works used to be very light so kaya pala, nung, like when you were you know when you were explaining the uh, first part of the series parang they're a little bit lighter beautiful and then when you were doing it in your home in your own space um without you know parang feeling conscious that people are staring at you or seeing you parang yung gaze um, then they transform your colors. So like that's an interesting part. Na buti na mention mo, kasi now like ah okay kaya pala ganon yung um parang observation ni Lorraine kasi that's what happened. Then the yeah. time. I I feel like I couldn't hide how it made me feel being exposed. Like the open studio is literally your house without walls. So parang yeah. oh and then the mess the mess is there and then oh and then I had to clean up after na parang I never clean up like when you're when you're not done you're not gonna clean up right but I had to clean up at the end of the day so it was a challenge also to 
myself like as a creative like do i edit myself do i make it pretty do i make it lighter and of course it's lighter when you're just working by yourself and like in a happy environment when you can control things about control is is like the constant thing but when you don't have control it doesn't mean that it's trash you know it doesn't mean that it's unusable it's still valid and it's still actually your work it's and it's nice for for miss lorraine to be able to see the the the, the sides of my work i guess because i also feel like it wouldn't be me if i was just always gonna pretend that i was okay making light works you know I, when I was younger, I actually really wanted to go into graffiti and street art is like super close to my heart, but it's just not in my style yet. <laughs> so I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I actually want to ask you about that because I, I, I think I know now you had you you did murals before and you participated in street art. So I wanted to ask you about that aspect of your like creative practice that you used to do. Are you are you still engaging or doing street art now? Or um, with the with the pandemic, um, I stopped the street art, but the murals mm-hmm. are are still there. I still do murals, but murals and street art are kind of different for me because murals are commissioned and street art is more like in the moment like that <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so I, I wish I could do it more because I want to also be at that confidence level where you can just it's 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 just a lot of it is um just becoming comfortable with who I am and, and it's very I, I kind of I kind of almost hate how it's very transparent with my work. <laughs> Even when I'm just feeling good, it's good. When I'm feeling bad, it's bad. <laughs> so I I don't know. I wanna I wanna be more consistent about it. But I feel like that comes with just churning out and churning out work. Even whatever happens, any material. So yeah, I, we we with when we did street art. It was just so. It's it's just so community building, you know. People were you, were you part of um like a street art collective? No, not 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 officially. No, I was just like doing some volunteering and like joining sessions with, you know, uh, Kabuki Collective. And, um, but yeah, it's a different experience because they really make you feel like you're part of a group. Yeah. Uh, accepting and it's it's very different from how street artists are perceived in common you know in the public eye you know. they really have something to say and mm-hmm. I wish I was that confident also <laughs> yeah I any any questions you wanna ask about my work or past present Actually, um, from because like from your practice of street art, no, like you mentioned, it was so um, very like community driven. Preparing talagang for anchored siya dun sa collective practice of belonging to you know like a community. Um, I was wondering if that was also something because you also do natural dye, so I I was wondering if that was also something na parang um you experience with also Liana does a lot of things no um, she does <laughs> and then, um natural dyeing um because i remember natural dyeing. um yeah natural yeah. The, 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 oh. the fabric in the because oh. oh. i remember um i took up art history from way way before pa like um the dye they shampoo meron siyang specific places that it comes from like especially yeah. local dye, no? so parang i think um in order for you to access those materials or those techniques etc where you have to look for a community that you can tap into or like work with and engage with so yeah. i was wondering um especially siguro like how long have you been practicing natural dyeing na pala yan? Since to- mga 2017. Oh, 2017 pa. So, yeah, so, 
it before I sig like um because now there are a lot of you know like people who does natural dyes, no? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was wondering kung before para baka medyo mas mahirap pa ba access yung certain etc. So um, I was oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for um thank you for being interested in my other personality. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> It's just that I just get so, I don't want, like I have, um, I rotate between these five things that I really, really love, just in order to not be sick of making, <laughs> you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the most, you know, in the most loving way that I can describe it, but, you know, if it's still a bore, Yana. Not, I guess, not bore, but it's it's not the it's not the word bore, but I have yet to ano. Uh, it's just my excite, uh, my excite sa bago. Yeah, I guess that's it. Like oh, like <laughs> 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 <I don't, laughs> <I can't, laughs> Yeah, it's just the excitement is overwhelming sometimes. So I don't, I just wanna be finished with what I'm doing now so I can do that one. But I I tried to put um. A discipline to it and I relate between these five things so there's this awesome there's painting there's murals there's community work there's also fashion and music so um, com- uh, fashion and community work in your natural dye painting is painting and mural work is also connected with community work and and, and, and music is music you know uh, but yeah so I, it's also my way of making sure that whatever I do is cohesive, just just so the community is at the heart of everything. So just so people don't um, confuse what I do with the other stuff. So um, yeah. Um, when I started natural dyeing, I was it was born out of just. Um, hating so much of the waste that was happening because I was wasting a lot of the dye in the water and I kept needing to buy these artificial dyes that didn't really smell so nice and I wasn't able to get the color that I wanted the, the blue earthy tone color so just by being a little bit meticulous about those things um, and joining a lot of bazaars and organizing art market talks at the time. Um, my my good friend now, si Joy Ann, we, we, we got to talking and she was like, do you want to try our indigo dye? And yeah, ever since then, so many years ago, I've just, I've just found a place in the natural dye advocacy because I, I don't intend to to build a natural dyeing facility, you know, that's not my role. My role as a natural dyer is to use indigo, particularly the natural dye indigo that comes from indigo plants that grows in Quezon, Palawan, um, so many different parts, uh, um, you know, Abra of the Philippines, and kind of celebrate it by applying modern modern designs using ancient Japanese techniques, which is yung folding and clamping, which is itaji me shibori. So if, if I can bring awareness to natural dye by doing that, more people can appreciate our natural resources and the communities that take care of our natural resources, actually. So yun, um, I've encountered a lot of people who wanted to get in touch with the communities directly, but it doesn't really work that way because they're not there to be visited or, like, you know, they're there to be um, supported. So, so support their art and support their craft by buying their stuff at the right price. So, so that's the kind of conversation that I always have when I when I talk about natural dyes, naman, it's just how these communities should be respected and not commodity. So, yeah. it's community, pa rin. <laughs> community everywhere. <laughs> yeah. 
um, the strength in community talaga. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but, uh, I want to ask then pala with um, Philippine Indigo. Actually, like when I, people kasi think about, you know, like Indigo, syempre, isipin nila para yung, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the, the technique that you do, like the tie-dye. Yeah, the Shita G. Shibori. Yeah. Like, um, I think parang most people like think of it na parang more Japanese meaning. And I feel na not a lot of people know that we, we do have, you know, like Philippine Indigo. Like it grows here. Yeah. It's actually something that I've only recently discovered as well through you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, that. Yeah, that's part of the advocacy of it. It's actually the the research on extracting indigo from the indigo plant is is, is ongoing. You know, there's so many ways that you can extract the color naturally from the indigo plant. But natural, I say natural, but I don't mean uh, it's without chemicals. You know, to extract something, it has to go through fermentation and. And all these chemicals, natural chemicals, get mixed in, like um, sodium. Uh, um, I'm, uh, well, what the, th- the thing is, how we extract the color now is by using the sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrosulfite chemicals. So it's not as straightforward as you just mix it with the water. And then, yeah, there's so much chemistry behind it and science, and it's super cool. And it takes like, three to four hours to go through the whole process. But it teaches people to be patient with the craft. It's not something that you can at all treat like tie dye. But you can do the you can do the folding techniques with different colors, don't get me wrong. That's a different craft in itself. But the actual dyeing process of turning the fabric from one color to indigo color. That takes a lot of time because you have to dip it once, twice, three times, four times until it gets to the shade that you like, the darkest shade. And when you put patterns, it becomes so intricate. And, you know, I, I, the usual feedback that I get from my participants in workshops would be parang, they kind of need to relinquish that control. You know, I, I want it to be perfect because it's geometric, right? You can, you, can, you can see that the pattern will form. But you can only plan ahead to a certain point. The rest you have to leave it to nature and to natural circumstance, like the way the water comes in. <laughs> so I'm like, even me, like you just make it perfect, with perfect fold and perfect pattern. But like, at the end, something like opens up, like the rubber band pops and pop, and then the water comes in. And like, oh, mm, I just have to accept that there's beauty in that. <laughs> like, mm. And then. People, when you, when you bring the works, the people you show them, they really like the imperfections. Actually, it's, it's just this on um, never-ending battle between like what you want and what you get. So. And I feel as well, with dying, like eco dying, actually um, for. For me, although like I recently lang din got into the like, eco-dying, pero baliktad yung akin, like corrosive <laughs> material, like rust yung inagam. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, but then, syempre, like I started experimenting with uh, other plants. But I'm, I'm on, from my experience, apparently, it's not, like I didn't really got, get interested too much about the technique, although that's also important for like the process. Pero yung uh, what was valuable for me was that you like throughout the process you get in touch with all these natural materials. The parang the are oh, like the, yeah, just around you. Tapos parang yeah. di mo naman siya, di ka aware no na parang ay okay galing pala to dito sa plant na to. Parang, yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. something that people who have joined um, your demos or workshops have also expressed yeah they they um they tell me na parang, oh how do i how do i get more of this dye and then because they want to make a lot but i was like you can't just 
buy a lot, you know. You have to consider the storage and and how how long you're gonna use it for. But there's so many so many things to take with you. Need, you know? Yes, exactly. And, and 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 like prepping prepping your environment actually before you do natural dyeing is like a third of the whole thing, the whole process. Like you, you have to consider where where do you live? If I live in Makati, I live in the city. So I'm not gonna be bringing a bunch of leaves and getting leaves from trees here. I mean, I'm gonna adapt to my environment. I'm gonna work within my my setting, you know. Um, if you are fortunate enough to live near a place where there's free flowing water, I think you can practice a more sustainable I know they're natural dye, but here you have to conserve water. You can't just throw and throw and clog the pipes and things like that. So work with where you are. The environment is your teacher. Yes, yes. And then like um with um like you mentioned though, no, um depending on where you live, you know materials na makukuha mo. So, there is an aspect of, you know, like, um, place making, like, being aware yeah. of your surroundings. Yeah. No? Super. Yeah. Like, I feel na during the pandemic, that's something people are trying to be more aware of now that they're stuck in their homes and not, you know, like, going to places. Yeah, yeah that's why you notice the buying impulses of people during the pandemic were things to beautify their homes because they realized that, oh my gosh, I have to live with this view for a long time. I don't know how how long I can stand like a blank wall or like... Nesting and nesting. <laughs> nesting and <Yeah. in> houses. <laughs> so, yeah, um, any questions pala from our other audience? Ako may, curious ako kasi sabi mo uh, your work uh, parang spontane, uh, nag-focus dun sa spontaneity ng, ng medium, ng movements ng yeah. during the practice how did pandemic affect it? Kasi since yung pandemic is very controlled and limited tapos did it affect oh. the, the subject that you're making the the production. Yeah, Kasi exactly. nakong itinias for artists recently eh, nung sobrang limited nung ano, diba? So, so paano siya na, paano mo siya na, Wala especially yung exhibit mo is, <laughs> especially exhibit mo is, ano, parang transitioning into pandemic to loosening up. I actually really appreciated the constraints. You know, it gave, you know, it gave me a sense of, um, it's measurable kasi. Like, the lockdowns are from this to this. So, oh, just, parang may, and, may due date, di ba? Oh, oh. And, um, it was, in, it was during the pandemic that I actually resigned from my full-time job, which I, I used to teach preschool online. So, it's like kids from ages three to five that you would engage with. <laughs> and then, um, I realized that if I wait a minute, I can continue with this advocacy on my own terms. Like, I realized that like, the pandemic really pushed me out of the institution. Like, I was trying to blend in, you know, I was trying to, trying to make it work with the boss type thing and it just does not work for me. But <laughs> time and time again, it, the, it, I'm just coming out of the collab, parang coming out and going into a collaborative zone and that's where I've been thriving for the past decade. So, um, the pandemic gave me a time, a quiet time, where I didn't have to go out. I could just work. I, I made so much stuff. <laughs> I feel like also people were like, <laughs> but I, they didn't have other stuff to spend on. So they were like, ah, can you make me a painting? And like, I don't know. I really, I don't want to, I kind of don't want to think about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it has a it wasn't without its ups and downs of course like but i can't really dwell so much on the downs cuz i i always end up being okay so as long as 
as long as there's opportunity to collaborate. You know, I hit a, like a prep, like I hit a wall. Wow. But you can collaborate. <laughs> but you can, <laughs> you can work on something else. So it's been like that for a good year now. As I've oh, actually, <laughs> I celebrated a year of just being full-time and enjoying like the best part of my career so far. So it's had the like, solo show, collaboration with so many creatives and open space open studio grant like just having a studio you know again because i had to close up my studio on mandaluyong when the pandemic happened because i couldn't afford it but now you know just people coming to the hub and just in getting getting them curious about themselves about oh maybe i can try artist but i'm like guys <laughs> There's no sign anywhere that says artists only here. <laughs> They're like, everybody's welcome, whatever orientation, like inclination, whatever mm-hmm. you want to bring to the table. It's open here, it's welcome here. That's why um, musicians came, you know, other artists came, and like strangers came, friends went, and family. It's really, really like a beautiful, beautiful experience, and it's always been a beautiful experience ever since the first time I've collaborated with the Hub, joining as a maker, so <laughs> so feature market. Mm-hmm. It it hasn't. There's never been a dull moment. That was the first time we joined. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then was Andrew. Kami. Wala pa kami. What uh, year was that? Mm, so <laughs> yeah, Angel, Angel times. <laughs> we went in 2015, like Julie said, I. Not 2015, 2014, 15, people. Yeah, eight, oh gosh. Mm. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, you've known 98B, but we haven't actually met yeah. him. No, I mean, I've known of 98B. Because you would be having, you'd be hosting these collaborations like parang with the Jap, um, with the Japanese creatives, with sila um, Ralph Lumbres and Ness and sila JK. So, um, sipat lawing collaborations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're they're close to my heart also. Um, do we have any other questions, Arabella? <laughs> Ara, okay, you have a question that you wanna ask? Oh, I have none of one so far. I'm enjoying the conversation. Yay. <laughs> For uh, next report to Frankie, like, do you have questions? No? <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> no. Uh, wala din. Wala, wala naman na. So your last question na lang din from me as we go into Miro back in a while. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Madami naman kasi talagang um, pwedeng pag-usapan. Ano? Like, Ma, you know, na din kasi yung artistic practice mo yan. Like, throughout the years. Like, the new one says, evolution. Pwede na mag-retrospective. Oo. <laughs> <laughs> Ayun. So, um, actually with Miro, um, okay. Um, so, from that, he share it here. Yes. So, uh, Basically, the question really is just because um, we wanna we wanna ano, um, try this format where you know like we could have people you know, participate in the conversation then or like give their input. Yeah, love that. That would be okay. so. Kaya kami gumawa ng mero. Open lang ba to? Open lang ba to? Yes. Until wala tong dito nag nag expire. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Forever. Wow, great. Forever, why? Pwede kang mag-ano dito, mag-graffiti or mag-troll. Oh. Yan. <laughs> Troll. Uh. Unless I lock it. But anyway. Ah, okay. Pwede mo lock it. Uh, um, since yung theme mo din naman, or uh, like the your practice is very much like inclined to, you know, like participation, yeah. etc. Um, I guess we wanted to ask, Everybody, you know, like, 
what they think about participation and engagement. And you can actually see, you know, like notes here, like what are the difficulties or challenges? Um, what is, um, why is it needed? Um, things to consider when engaging, you know? And then this is actually something that I want to, like the answers I want to get particularly from the interns. Like uh, Anna and yeah. Frankie din, kasi parang, uh, what it means, like most of them are students, you know, like when students wala din kasi sino interaction. So what it means to, you know, like, actually engage, like with yeah. the three labs, parang ano yung bakit kayo, like for, for most interns that you've had, like they really want to be part of the community talaga. So I like, wanted to get everybody's input there. So we could give to her like a minute or two. We could use like a stick and note. Yeah. Sticky note. I'm gonna try to write stuff. Ito yung mural mo yan. Which one? The one with um, people. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's the community mural. Yeah. Ah, okay. Community yeah. mural. Tapos meron pa isang gagawin. May ginagawa ko bang? No. I mean, I'm just um, facilitating the the mural making. Ah, but okay. I feel like people have seen enough of my stuff for, 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 a, bit, for a while. So. Paano ka pala nakapag, nag, nag-street, ano? Nag-street? Street art nga ba? Street art? Street um, street? Yeah, um, ano lang? May grupo? Connect, connect. It's it's usually just going out of your comfort zone and like expressing. Oh, hey, I want to be part of this. Can I be part of this? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually that straightforward and they're really nice. Everybody. Hindi ba mahirap? Medyo parang bro-y. You know, you would think, pero hindi. They're really, really, really. I I like. I have I have the best experience. There, there's groups for sure. Like there's groups that you you connect with more. Like, for, for example, yung mga themes ng gawa nila, there's people who oh, ano? more specific. characters and, oh. and styles, for sure. Pero, it's really a good community. Very accepting. And, and they'll really teach you how to do different techniques. Like, if you're a painter and you want to get into spray paint, they'll hold, like, spray painting workshops. And they just, because they want to just publish, just bring it to the public, eh. They want art for the public. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh. So at least, ano pa rin yung pu- puso? <laughs> puso? Yeah. Nasa, saan ko makikita yung mga street works mo? Gusto ko makita. Uh, let me see. Puro, yeah. ano, puro paintings yung nasa Facebook, no? Oh, yeah. Because it was a while back. Let me... Let me... Ah, sobrang tagal na ba? <laughs> Sige, ako um, na lang. <laughs> I'll, I'll link it. Just... Yeah, yeah, see. And I'm human works. Very Machado. Machado. Really. My book from bookmark to us. <laughs> I know. It's it, it, like I don't choose the, the the medium so much anymore. I just I wanted to say that I paint on anything and everything. It's just because I really like working with different mm. materials. Na parang oil for nakagigil just try. Parang oh, pwede ba to? <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Are you the same? Do you also feel? Mm-mm, ganun. Kaya lang. Right. Nagyan siya medyo limited ng ano, pag, pag maraming, pagdatingan na ng mga bills, medyo ups, kailangan ko muna mag, ano, pause. <laughs> Mag-rethink yun yan. <laughs> Pero, uh, initially, ganun talaga yung, ano, kailangan ko, na-excite ako sa mga bagong, yung gaya yung sinabi mo, ay, gusto ko matry. Oh my God, pati accessories pala. Yeah, it's a, it takes no. a lot of uh, furniture. Yeah, there's there's also, um, yeah. Are you going to the right? <laughs> Oo, nag, <laughs> nag, right? binabras ka yung Facebook mo. <laughs> I, actually took a, I actually took a bunch of stuff off of it na. Just Because uh, I, I migrated all most of my indigo dyeing stuff to my other account, Tagong Taguan. That's the actual Ano account. pangalan? Eh, it's in the bio. It's tagum dot taguan. Tagum is the uh, oh, the Filipino Filipino word for indigo dye. Oh, 
How is Miro is cool. I like it. It it. <laughs> Oo nga. Dan. Tama na ba? Enough na. <laughs> Let me find that street. Uh, I mean, like, cause I working working with, with um working on walls. It's nice to get feedback from people who pass by. Like when you are aware that you're gonna work in a public space, it's different. As opposed to the open studio setup, because in my head, it's my studio, but there's people there. So parang, oh. <laughs> so parang, there's completely <laughs> concerned as about oh, what's happening. So um then like I I have um I can link you, I don't know. Wait now. Here, let me send it on Zoom. Here is one of my earlier street attempts. <laughs> I love the difficulty of learning how to physically engage again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, do I answer these or? <laughs> I think you, we, you can respond, yeah. So, this was actually one of the core challenges that I wanted to post to the to myself and to the people who would be I know interested enough to come you know just from seeing a post from hub make lab how engaged can I get you to be to just come and see the space for yourself and to interact with me like we'd be both super awkward and everything but that's okay because everybody is after the pandemic so it's really once in a lifetime i hope na parang experience because it was done in the context within the context of a pandemic so how do you actually you know the first visitors that i got strangers we actually talked about so much stuff na parang, oh my gosh. <laughs> But, uh, it doesn't feel like they're a stranger anymore because they, they share I'm thirsty for engagement. Everybody is just thirsty for um like Next real people, <laughs> real conversations. And we've had enough of hi, hello, and how are you? And then we really wanted to talk. The space was available for that. You, uh, you mentioned pala yan, ano, earlier that you collaborated even during the pandemic. Like you did a lot of work. How, how, I mean, like, what, how was the process, in, you know, like working with, you know, like these other people, like people who commissioned your works or even artists who worked with you like, during that time? Or, like, we're just beginning to learn how to communicate in isolation like how was it for you there um i remember actively searching on google how to foster community in, in a virtual world because <laughs> it's so like imagine i'm imagine i'm conducting these natural dye workshops and then after i say one-on-one you one one-on-one and then after they'd have no I'd, I'd have no way to to get them to interact with one another because not everybody is on Facebook, not everybody is on Instagram, and of course Telegram or Discord because the age range of the the participants was like 24 to 65. So I'm like, what kind of community am I building here? So I got really concerned that I wasn't doing enough community building. So I was like, I how to community build virtually mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and as an introvert it's also hard to <laughs> always be present no, like on discord and think tweet about it so um that led me to one-on-one collaborations with artists like, hey do you want to do something that i can paint on something and then you can work on something. and also the pandemic was a time when a lot of fundraising needed to be done so it was kind of easy to uh-huh. Um, I was like, okay, yeah, like let's get to um, how do we help? Like, can we paint on stuff to raise money for stuff? And can we collaborate and maybe help you raise funds for Ganyan? So it, there was really reasons to paint 
really a lot of reasons to work together because we were just helping each other out of whatever situation we were in, either the creative block or financial situation or somebody needed more exposure. Parang, yeah, promote, promote, promote. Everybody deserves to be recognized or seen. Yeah, most nice. Yes, naman si Frankie. Ang daming tanong. I love introvert. it. I love it. <laughs> Nag-bloom siya sa Miro. Sa Miro. <laughs> Miro brought it out of Frankie. Uh, <laughs> In Zoom, she was like, has, no. Has, 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 oh, no. <laughs> mga has, has, has. <laughs> And then, Miro, oh, she's like, not, so. <laughs> so Frankie, is it the pain? Pwede mo anonymous dito, ganun. No, you can see Julius going. <laughs> Oo nga, nakikita ko gumagalaw-galaw yun. <laughs> gumagalaw-galaw yung pangalan ng mga tao. Yeah. Ay, share mo dito yung ano mo, mga social media accounts. Ay, sige. Ay. Frankie, right? So, I wanna get a little Frankie, come in a little. Like, did reception change in the shift to global, uh, digital spaces? Ay, oh, maganda yung tanong. Sorry, Did reception change in the shift to digital spaces? Did reception to my artwork, sorry. I keep typing my email address. <laughs> reception, I guess, to your my work, work practice when we shifted to digital space. The shift to digital media me, di, digital space was kind of interesting. Um some of the projects that I um started with was like Using the Instagram questions um, uh, um, part, right? in on Instagram, you could ask people questions, like give them polls and so on. And then um, some of my favorite projects were like, uh, what's your favorite song? And then I'll try to paint along while listening to it. Because I, I wanted to know what people were listening to. And I just wanted to broaden my musical ano also, musical... Um, influences. So, what are you listening to this pandemic? So, people sent in like Spotify links and stuff. So, I what I did was I I played their songs over and over until like, <laughs> parang medyo mindless na yung ano to a point where I was just listening to it over and over and and whatever came out came out. So that was like it was nice because I got to know people more through the songs that they were listening to at the same time it was like self-reflection what would come out if i was suddenly least if i was suddenly listening to k-pop or k-pop like to heavy 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 metal or electronic and so even that was really i know and another one was doing process you know doing process videos like with procreate um, it was nice to engage with people just to show them how I was making my artworks in in a digital way. Because diba in kasi diba in Procreate you can record the the process and then you can replay it and you can watch how the whole thing happens. So it was nice to share that with people. Um. I I graduated because in multimedia arts in CSB. Mm. So, oh. so then I'm like, it kind of brought out the CSB digital multimedia arts in me when I needed to, you know, mm-hmm. to shift into digital. Thing. Mm-hmm. But other than that, everything that's been coming my way so far has just been a challenge accepted kind of thing. Parang, okay, 
Okay. Adapt, no? Oh, oh. He, he had, you know, like a background in digital arts to assist you with that shift. Yes, very grateful. Everything that I'm... I'm so sorry. Yes, Julius, yes. Ay, sige, sorry. No, no, Alam mo no. yung sa akin kasi, i-add ko lang, no? Kasi nung pandemic, since walang physical interaction with my artwork, naging conscious for me na magmukhang kung ano yung nakikita niya in real life dun sa kung ano yung picture nung So, kailangan documented na maayos yung works. Oh. Kailangan yung color is the same. Tapos, so, I'm trying to archive my works. Ganun. Kasi parang, parang wala na silang chance makita yung works. Kasi, <laughs> eh, hindi man ako active sa social media. So, parang naging conscious for me to, to archive and document that. Oh, wow. That's Which is good. Because at least... At least na document na finally my portfolio na ako ganon. That's true. That's good. That's something good. Nakuha na logica. <laughs> How do you archive your work? That's so cool. I mean, you, what what ex- what's your best? Um, David, eh, kasi ang old school ko sa Google Drive yung ginagamit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Sa Google Drive. So ngayon I had to pay extra for additional cloud space. Uh, so, para at mas madaling mag-share. Eh, si Cathy, ang daming sinishare ng mga ano, uh, apps. So, try to explore. Yung pa lang ako nag-explore ng mga bagong Cathy pala eh. Ano si Cathy pala eh. Ano to? Hindi <laughs> <laughs> ako techie, actually. Yung nag, nag-ano lang ako, nag-depend na ako dun sa mga young interns. Parang, young. Do we, oh. What do we use for oh. this? <laughs> Oh, oh. Nasta ako sa email tsaka sa Google Drive. It, pero it really helps to, you know, like, ask people. Especially, ako, oh, parang wala din naman ako background with, like, graphic design or, like, digital work. Or techie stuff. So, especially, like, studio arts, yung, <laughs> yung ano ko, yung background ko in college, so parang very, like, ano siya, parang, it, depends on you know like physical um interaction or physically showing your work online so ayun yeah steep learning curve <laughs> <laughs> but it it brings out the ano in you you know it really brings out something in you that you didn't know you could do pala there's there's such oh. a satisfaction in achieving something so different from what you're used to I feel like if a whole like I was gonna shift online, like just for my own artistic practice, or I wouldn't put much effort into it as like compared to like doing it for a project for like a space or like an initiative with everybody else. Because parang mas doon tumatakbo yung parang imagination ko, you know, like how to use all of these softwares to, you know, like, engage. Because for me, like, personally, introvert din naman ako, like, with my own artistic practice, like, as much as possible, like, I don't want to engage so much. Like, I don't want to be archived online. <laughs> I have no choice. Ayun na ma. Ayun. Ah, yeah. Anong, what's next, Yana? Oh, oh. Any upcoming projects? Uh, oh, um, I'm trying to get into um, a residency program. Um, nice. And just more engagements with the hub. I feel like this year I owe it so much to the to the hub to actually make it. You know, I've I've been promising. To be more active don kasi and and this year I I want I want to do that so I if if there's if there's a chance to engage with more creatives like you know making the space um making it a workshop going space again I would I would I would love that I would love to be part of that. Nice. You're also part of. Are you? You're also part of the um, group show, no? For like the next 
<laughs> yes, yes, yes. We do have a we do have a group show and with yes, yes. um yeah and um my work for that one. Was, sorry. So what back like she's part of oh, the okay. Uh, it's, nice. We're gonna have a show this month on the twenty third. Twenty third, right, right, right. Yeah. What uh, um yeah. the the work for that is um audiovisual. I wanna I wanna <laughs> go back to my to my graphic multimedia and, and, uh, multimedia graphic design thing because because <laughs> it's just. There's something about, you know, video, and I've I've always loved film and editing, and I, so if you, in my work, parang in the process of making my work, if you pause at a certain point, it's different, and then it's in a different way. But I wanted I wanted I wanted to document it in that way, so I'll I have a, I have a video projection and then a bunch of stills. As prints, I'm matray lang. Why not? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm I'm all I'm all over. I know. Practice ni yana. <laughs> what? What? Multifaceted. <laughs> like, walang ano. Whatever. <laughs> Go lang tama o oh, hanggang ano hanggang magsawa. Oh. Yolo, lo, I mean. Yolo. <laughs> <Tama>. <laughs> That's such a that's such an old millennial term now. Oh, no. Like agree siya, oh my gosh. But yeah. <laughs> We're old. Oh, that's why we yes. But I mean, thank you so much for having me and for this opportunity. Sana magkita tayo ulit. Allah, ano ba tawag? Ano ba tawag physically? Yeah, face to face in real life. Face to face. For classes. Yeah. Face to Classes. Sana wag na mag, ano, mag-alert level or something. Yeah. Wala na yan. Wala na yan. We all have... Or mistakes. World War. <laughs> <laughs> that took a... That took a, ano, realistic and... <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> yes. oh, you so, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Yana. Thank you. Medyo napahaba yung usapan natin. Ayun, ilang minuto, pero... It was really worth it. Very um, mm-hmm. cool and fruitful conversations. 